Hello again, whiskey friends. All right, for today's tasting, we're going to get into some Lagavulin Offerman Edition 11 year charred casts. This will be the first scotch tasting of the channel, but I'm going to make that a regular thing at least once a week. So we're going to kick off with this one, and then we'll talk about that a bit more before I pour this thing. So let's have some fun exploring this guy. And let's get to some scotch. Thanks for joining, everybody. All right, get that box out of there. We got the bottle of the Offerman edition. So I got this in California. Man, then I came back to Kentucky and they were everywhere. But I'm pretty excited to get into this. I'm pretty excited to do this tasting too. So in general, my whiskey adventure started with scotch. I was drinking scotch way before I was drinking bourbon. Uh, but somewhere around 2017, 2018, that's when I found out a, how many calories were in beers, and when I was drinking a six-pack, that had some negative consequences. So I got into whiskey more often, and as I gave up sugar, all those dessert flavors led me to a bourbon journey rather than a scotch journey. But every time I drink scotch, I'm like, man, I need to drink scotch more. With uh, Kelsey Durrell and also Austin the Bourbon Santa, we were doing this whole thing where we were exploring every region of scotch, different region every month. We had a blast and every time I loved it and then I just never returned to scotch. Like I just go to bourbon. 2023, I'm resetting habits. It is my goal to explore scotch more and I'm gonna use this forum to do that. And we're gonna start out with some Lagavulin. So I'm gonna pour it in a uh, Whiskey Central Glen. Cheers to Shayla. So I've had a few pours of this already. I'm about, yeah, you can see it. I'm about right there. I got this on a trip to California like two months ago. I haven't re-explored it since then too much. I'm excited to get back into it. The one thing I haven't done, ooh, that peat is just popping out of that bottle. One thing I haven't done is compared it to the Lagavulin 8-year. So this is 11 years, this is 8 years, I got the charred casts, we'll see what happens. But that's going to be an exciting comparison, because I want to go through these tastings, and I want to learn something. That's going to be kind of the point for me. And I want to do scotch once a week going forward. I don't know if that's like the popular thing to do, but I want to explore it. So that's what we're going to do. And hopefully you're along with that journey with me. Alright, so we're going to go into the nose of this one. I'll break it down just like I do bourbon. I guess the other thing to take away from this is if you were somebody that's really into bourbon and you haven't gotten into scotch yet, maybe this is a gateway to do it. Follow me on this journey. Why not? I'm going to do some, I'm starting with this Lagavulin in 11 year, the Offerman edition, but I'm going to go back to the cabinet that I have here. So when you're looking back behind me here, you know, this, these two shells are mostly all scotch. We're gonna re-explore all of them. It's time to reset this journey, start from scratch, see where we end up. All right, let's get into this thing. Oh my gosh, this thing is taking over the room, by the way. I'm glad I'm having nothing else tonight because this Pete's gonna ruin me for the rest of the day. Oh, my wife is gonna love me later on. It'll be worth it though. Cheers, whiskey friends. Let's go into the nose, we'll break down the palate. See, I think that's the thing. The difference between scotch and bourbon. Bourbon to me is all dessert. And that's what gravitates me towards bourbon all the time because I'm just sipping on dessert. There's something about scotch, though, that is soothing and relaxing. And that was my initial impression off of this nose. Just that, that peat, you know. 
sitting by a fire, kicking back, relaxing. Getting a bit of a... I want to say pineapple off of this one. You know, it kind of goes brighter. Bit of iodine there. Hmm. There's a sweetness there, and I'm trying to pin it down. I'm finally getting behind the peat. So I'm trying to break down what's going on behind. There's almost a, uh, a very faint plum wine aspect just hanging in the background. That's really catching my attention, even though it's in the background. I get a lot of a uh, salted pretzel with a caramel reduction. You know, there's a uh, there's a restaurant right by me here that makes their own pretzels and makes their own caramel reduction. It gives me hints of that. Oh, that pineapple though. Gosh, is pineapple the right thing? Do I go back to an apple? Somewhere between there, just a bright fruit. And then just everything around it is just charred. I know it's on the bottle there, but it really is, man. If you like took a pineapple on the grill and you charred it, you charred a pretty hardcore. That's kind of the smell. Ooh, got a lot of, like a fresh grass note on that one. Walking through a meadow. Once again, I feel like that's the difference between scotch and bourbon. Like, there's an experience with scotch versus just the dessert of the bourbon. It's a place sometimes, not the, just a flavor or a plate of food. Oh, man. Just so fresh and relaxing. All right, I'm pretty excited to go in for a taste. By the end of that, the, the peat part of that that was leaping out, I completely ignored it. I was just getting into it. It was just nice and fresh and relaxing. All right, let's go in for a taste. Cheers, whiskey friends. Mm. Oh yeah, that charred pineapple. That holds. Yeah, see, it's just like relaxing and calming versus the in-your-face bourbon dessert. Hmm. This is going to be a fun journey. So I'll break it down the same way I do the bourbons. We'll see if I change my structure. We're going to start with the front of the palate, mid palate, and then the finish here. And this one is a uh, 46%. And at the time, it cost me $90. So I ended up seeing it for 60 or no, not 60, 80 when I got back to Kentucky. I don't regret the 90. Mm. Yeah. I'd say front of the palate, I was getting mostly vanilla by mid palate. Turn to that pineapple, and it gets more and more charred as I get to the finish. There's a nice caramel still. I said that on the nose, it kind of runs through the end. Ooh, that sip was real good. Oh, yeah.
that charred, smoky peatiness that hits mid palate. Man, just reminds me of going to like a cabin in the woods, which brings up a whole lot of high school and, well, post high school memories for me. Takes me back to that place, though. Scotches take me to places, bourbons take me to desserts. I think that's the best way to describe it so far. We'll see if I continue to have that relationship between the two. But man, this is really good. And then you can't equate the proof when it comes to scotches. Like this is just 46%. That might seem low if you're into bourbons. Oh, the flavors just come and come, guys. It's really good. I'm really impressed by this one. Let's go into the Lagavulin 8 and learn something. Let's see if I can uh, distinguish any differences here. Definitely a color difference right off the bat. So this is an eight year Lagavulin, uh, 48% versus the 46. Very close and proof. A little different in years. And then of course you have the charred casks. Oh, green apple. A lovely green apple. Sea salt. Green apple and sea salt. That's pretty much what I'm getting from this one. Pretty sure the, the peat's negating itself at this point. Oh no, still that salted pretzel. No, there's a backbone to this one that's very similar to the 11 year. That charred pineapple though is gonna be the differentiator. Hmm. Oh, this is way sweeter, way sweeter. Oh, a lot more vanilla. Sweet vanilla at that. Oh, these are a lot more different than I thought. Yeah, the brightness in the eight year versus the 11 year, even on the nose. The smokiness on the 11 year negates any smokiness on the eight year. Oh, the eight years just lovely. It's just this nice, nice vanilla with the salt, with that sea salt and that pretzel. It's not even like the inside of the pretzel though. When I say it's like a pretzel, it's like just the outer shell of the pretzel with that salt. Mm, I love the eight year quite a bit. Trying to debate which one I like more. Does the 11 year add something that I like or do I like the eight year? Oh no. The finish, the finish is where this separates. And I go with the Offerman. Oh yeah. Yeah, that char note just hangs on the finish. Oh, it's quite lovely. Ooh. So I'm pretty impressed, I think, with the Offerman here. We'll see as my, you know, we grow in the experience here what I recommend versus what I not recommend. I'm not going to recommend anything at this point. But did I enjoy the Offerman? I did. I did quite a bit. Uh, for the price, perfectly fine with it. If you're going to start exploring Scotch, these ain't these aren't too bad ones to start figuring out here, especially if you can handle the peak. Oh, man. 
I'm really happy to explore that with you. Well, thanks for joining everybody. That was the Lagavulin Offerman edition. We'll continue to do the scotch, ta scotch tastings and uh, you know, we'll explore the category together. I think that's a pretty fun adventure for 2023. Come along with the ride with me. We'll see where we end up. Thanks for joining, Whiskey Friends. Catch you later.